from instantly popping back up and strutting back down the ramp after being dealt an L, to waltzing out on Raw the very next night as though nothing ever happened post defeat. This lot made a mockery of looking up at the lights when all was said and done. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 wrestlers who no sold huge losses. Number 10, Brock Lesnar quickly turns his attention to the game. Remember when former UFC heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar returned to WWE programming in 2012 after eight long years away, and then went on to beat the ever-loving crap out of John Cena in his first bout back, only to end up hilariously on the receiving end of an attitude adjustment on the steel steps and a loss out of the gates. Well, don't worry if that last part is a little fuzzy because the Beast Incarnate himself also seemed to forget all about that particular detail when it came time to rock back up on Monday Night Raw the very next night. Showing not so much as a scratch from the previous evening's bloody Extreme Rules war, Lesnar defiantly announced that the world got to witness firsthand Brock Lesnar bringing the pain. And while Triple H would do his utmost to remind the returning contract rebel of the actual result of said Cena skirmish, Brock effectively no-sold the contest. An odd on-screen political drama between the game and then head of talent relations John Laurinaitis before beating the piss out of his next sparring partner to set up their incoming program. If Brock doesn't mention it, it didn't happen. Number 9, Finn Balor joins the Judgment Day. Finally aligning with fellow Bullet Club alumni AJ Styles on WWE TV earlier this year, it looked as though Finn Balor could actually be on the cusp of a spell not involving him eating many a defeat at the hands of whoever Vince McMahon was obsessed with at that current moment. Rather depressingly, that promise was quickly extinguished by the time Balor, Styles, and Liv Morgan eventually went at it with the Judgment Day at Hell in a Cell, with the Prince getting emphatically speared post Rhea Ripley blockade, en route to being pinned by the villain's overlord Edge. In a rather unexpected turn of events, though, instead of limping out onto Monday Night Raw the next night with his tail well and truly between his bala legs, the former NXT champion was all smiles as he looked set to join up with Edge's gothic faction. And in a move that was likely more of a reflection of the WWE Hall of Famer not being all too keen to head down the supernatural road with his disciples, Balor would then help oust Edge as he bizarrely took over leadership duties just 24 hours on from being embarrassed by the trio and being responsible for his unit picking up the feud ending loss. It's all a bit strange. Number 8, John Cena rolls with the finishing Elimination Chamber punches. Around the time of the late noughties, John Cena had successfully evolved into the near indomitable presence, more often than not found spear heading WWE programming. So having Super Cena be suddenly dumped out of an Elimination Chamber bout midway through the action was the sort of development capable of dropping jaws the world over. And that was precisely what went down during No Way Out 2009's World Heavyweight Championship skirmish as he consumed a whopping three rather over finishers on his way out the door. Instead of selling the sheer impact of being co-breakered, speared, and 619 into next week, however, Cena had other ideas. Now, nobody should have expected the now former world champ to lay battered for the remaining seven minutes or so, but having Cena comically roll out of the ring like a man in need of a quick breather made the preceding trio of finishers look strangely feeble. When you nailed with three of the most devastating moves of the period in quick succession, would it have been too much to ask for a moment to let the weight of the finishers land before darting off out of the action? Probably not, Cena. Number 7, Bray Wyatt looks forward to a fresh start. Given the fact Bray Wyatt's children's TV presenter alter ego skipped back back into the spotlight on the first Raw post 37th show of shows and declared he felt great and that this could be a brand new start for him and all of his funhouse critters, it definitely looked like WWE were wasting little time burying his wholly disappointing Viper debacle and defeat in the ground. However, in perhaps an even stranger development than Wyatt's fiend surviving being literally burned alive, the star would then completely disappear from WWE programming in the subsequent weeks, before being ultimately cut loose in July. Far from delivering the fresh start that was gleefully pitched just a few hours on from another momentum killer of a loss, Wyatt's comical no-selling of Orton's red-tinted riot now sits as his final act of a 12-year rollercoaster of a WWE ride. Number 6, Hawk pings up after a 5-star chokeslam. The May 13th, 2003 edition of Monday Night Raw saw the returning Road Warriors collide with World Tag Team Champions Kane and Rob Van Dam over the duo's straps. Despite this match acting as something of an audition for a full-time spot on the roster for their legendary unit, it ultimately wasn't to be, and their chances likely weren't helped by Hawk's unflattering reaction to the champ's chokeslam 5-star frog splash combination. With the iconic Legion of Doom putting in a solid enough shift up to that point, an evidently vexed Hawk reacted to eating the majority of the damage on offer in the bout by darting back up to his feet before RVD and the Big Red Machine could even raise their titles in triumph. In the end, this would also act as Hawk's final appearance in a WWE ring before he succumbed to a sudden heart attack a few months later. 
Number 5. AJ Styles shrugs off an anything but phenomenal Mania debut AJ Styles didn't get off to the most successful of starts when it comes to his show of shows career. In about that looked as though it had show stealer written all over it heading into WrestleMania 32, the phenomenal one went at it with one-time Y2 AJ teammate Chris Jericho in a serviceable rematch. However, upon doing the favors for a veteran who clearly didn't need the grandest stage rub, the events that would unfold on the following night's episode of Raw made that call look even more baffling in hindsight. Dumped into a fatal four-way to decide new WWE Champion Roman Reigns' first challenger, the former New Japan Pro Wrestling and TNA darling completely no-sold his mania failure, and set his sights firmly on the big dog strap as the likes of Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho all joined him in scrapping for a spell. If that wasn't enough, Styles would then go on to win the whole damn thing in the evening's main event, completely palming off his lackluster first night on the mania job in next to no time. Number 4. Braun Strowman instantly gets one back on Tyson Fury. Acting as the culmination of a program that now feels as though it went down in an entirely alternate reality, Braun Strowman found himself squaring up against heavyweight world champion boxer Tyson Fury under the bright lights of the King Fahd Stadium in Saudi Arabia back at Crown Jewel 2019. Determined not to have the mainstream superstar suffer a loss in his first ever professional wrestling showing, but sensing that having their monster among men look like an utter fool wouldn't do them any favors either, WWE hatched a master plan of sorts to ensure both men looked strong as the dust settled on the Monster Mash. Well, they tried. Hot on the heels of the Gypsy King picking up the W via deeply deflating countout, on the back of a knockout right hand on the apron, Strowman effectively shrugged off a shot that had put down genuine boxing sensations to deliver a running power slam on the victor mere moments after said losing effort. Further diluting the Saudi showdown, the two apparent bitter rivals would then share a polite handshake in the ring on the next edition of SmackDown, before obviously beating the piss out of the B-team. Number 3. Austin Aries pops straight back up by the time Austin Aries bolted upright seconds after Johnny Impact's crowning moment at Bound for Glory 2018, most had chosen to entirely check out when it pertained to the wacky developments usually found going down within the promotion during this odd period. Matters weren't exactly helped by Impact's reaction to Aries and Johnny's surreal Twitter feud either, with the Wrestling Observer later reporting that management wasn't happy with their unapproved work on the social media platform due to it potentially contradicting their plans in the long run. It's still not exactly clear as to whether or not the promotion actually greenlit the abrupt exit post-defeat too. Despite Dave Meltzer feeling as though it would only be a matter of time before Aries showed up on the impact scene again, on the back of his contract expiring, further behind-the-scenes developments would result in the greatest man who ever lived, ultimately declining a new deal and ending his impact career on one of the strangest beats of its era, and that is saying something. Number 2. MJF Brushes Off His Wardlow Squash Thoroughly delivering on a storyline that had been unfolding since the early days of AEW's existence, Maxwell Jacob Freeman would finally be forced to pay for his consistently despicable treatment of his one-time war dog bodyguard at this year's Double or Nothing event. However, instead of the focus being on Wardlow's star-making performance throughout the program and during the emphatic squash on the night of the pay-per-view itself, the wrestling world was more interested in what the future held for the salt of the earth on the back of a rather eventful weekend. Fresh off of no showing a meet and greet before the May 29th event, MGF was shockingly handed a live mic on Dynamite to air his grievances in regards to not being paid the same amount as ex WWE guys. And while Maxwell did at least momentarily offer a nod to the substantial battering he was subjected to at the hands of his former employee, the speed in which he glossed over that absolute massacring took pretty much all of the attention away from the pair's near three year long narrative and directed it solely on his new work shoot war with his bass. Number 1. Triple H laughs off Jeff Hardy. After finally returning to the WWE stage and seemingly getting a handle on his demons at the time, it looked as though Jeff Hardy was well on his way to becoming a serious main event player in 2007. An intercontinental title win would eventually pave the way for an intriguing rivalry with Triple H, as the two popular faces went at it over the right to challenge for the WWE Championship at the 2008 Royal Rumble event at Armageddon. And while the game would be forced to do the J.O.B. at this moment in time, in order to give Hardy the much-needed rub in the lead-up to an eventual show down with Randy Orton at the next pay-per-view. Trip still had a few tricks up his sleeve to ensure he didn't come out of the closely fought battle, looking inferior to his friendly adversary, selling the nature of arguably Hardy's most important singles win at that point, in the same way you would being cheekily pranked by a younger sibling. A genuinely surprising and thrilling result was entirely undercut by the cerebral assassin's smug grin, and with it later becoming known just how against Hardy's eventual ascent to the top of the mountain Trips legitimately was behind the scenes, it's not too hard to see what his intentions likely were with these petty losing antics. 
And that's our list of any other wrestlers who know sold huge losses. Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you dig this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome articles just like the one this video you're watching is based on. And I would know because this idiot wrote it. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you as always for clicking on this video today. And hopefully I will see your faces very, very soon. Bye-bye.